free. Hello, brothers and sisters. God bless. Hope your night or day is going good. Everything's going well with you. This was a video that was sent to me by a, a friend and a brother in Christ. It's an old video by Final Call, who has passed away already, unfortunately believing a false gospel. I did a video while he was alive. When I did the video, I remember thinking, I hope you know he repents, believes the true gospel. But from what we see, as far as what we know about him, he died believing a false gospel. And he wouldn't rightly divide the word of truth. He would twist and malign the word of God to get people to believe that they'll ultimately be justified by the works of the law. This was another example of it. I thought I'd play it so that we could get in the mindset of people who to hold to a work salvation, works righteousness. So we can see the error that they make. And so I'm going to go ahead and play the video through. It's a very short video. It's only a minute and 51 seconds. And then we'll play it through and critique it and show what he gets wrong here. No sinners will go into the kingdom of heaven. There are many people who have been deceived into thinking that they cannot stop sinning. If you go on sinning, you will certainly end up in hell. I read the words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 onwards. Or do you not know? that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. He makes it very clear. He says, and such were some of you. Repentance means to turn away from sin, to turn away from your former lifestyle and to live in obedience to Jesus Christ, to be utterly holy. Because without holiness, no man will see God. You must repent, dear friend, or you will certainly perish in hell. My so that was the video played through. And if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you'll see already that this guy doesn't know anything about the nature of justification, what it means to be sanctified or what it means to be washed. When it says you are washed, you were justified and you were sanctified in the name of the Lord and the spirit of our God. Or how a person is made righteous because it says the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. So we have to ask ourselves how a person is made righteous and then rightly divide the scriptures and come up with conclusions that are biblical. So I'm going to go ahead and play this through and we'll um, critique it. So get right into it. No sinners will go into the kingdom of heaven. There are many people who have been deceived into thinking that they cannot stop sinning. So he says people have been deceived in thinking they cannot stop sinning. Uh, can't, you have to ask yourself, can you stop sinning? Can anyone stop sinning? If you could stop sinning, you would be sinless. And if you ever at any point say, well, I'm sinless, I'm without sin. The scripture says if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. So he can't stop sinning either as far as stopping all of his sin where he never sins anymore. He says people have been deceived in believing that they can't stop sinning. Well, the apostle Paul says that I know in me that is in my flesh no good thing dwells. For the willing to do good is present with me. But how to perform that which is good I cannot find. But the evil that I hate that I practice. So I see there's a law in my members waging war against the law of my mind and bringing me into the captivity of the law of sin and death. There are many people who have been deceived into thinking that they cannot stop sinning. If you go on sinning, you will certainly end up in hell. O oh, wretched man who will deliver me from this body of death, I thank Jesus Christ my Lord, that on one hand with my mind I serve the law of God, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. So the Apostle Paul is describing a situation where 
he wants to do good. He recognizes the law of God is good. But when he goes to try to do the very thing that he wants to do that is good, he actually does the very evil that he hates. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this statement right here that he made that you can stop sinning because it's completely fallacious that a person can stop sinning. It's the idea that you could be perfectly sinless and without sin. In essence, what he's saying when he says you can stop sinning is he's saying indirectly that you can keep the law. Since sin is transgression of law and he's saying you can stop sinning, by implication he's saying that you can keep the law. But the scripture says that no one can keep the law. By the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. Only by the law comes the knowledge that we're guilty, not that we're actually keeping the law. The scripture tells us that the law came in, that the whole world would become guilty before God and every mouth would be stopped. That no one would have a righteous appeal in and of themselves to say, look, I'm guiltless under it and I'm keeping it. I'm not, I'm not sinning anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and play the rest of this. If you go on sinning, you will certainly end up in hell. I read the words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 onwards. Or do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. Okay, you can see the scripture that he just read, the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then he mentioned a bunch of things that have to do with the law, idolatry, covetousness, thieving, adultery, all these things have to do with the law. So Paul says that they are not these things, that they were these things, but they were justified, they were sanctified, and they were washed. So we have to ask ourselves, were these people justified because they then started keeping the law, started behaving right? And then upon their law performance and compliance, they were declared justified. Well, we know that's not the case because when we rightly divide the word of truth, the Bible says that we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. That a person has a non-guilty verdict by their faith apart from any performance and obedience to the law. We maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. So when it says they were justified, they were sanctified, we have to understand that their justification did not come through performance to the law. You can see that Paul saying the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God and then it lists all these ungodly attributes under the law. Idolatry, adultery, swindling, thieving. So the collection of all these things would be ungodly attributes under the law. And so what Paul tells us in Romans chapter 4 verse 5 is to the one who doesn't work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. So to the one who doesn't work, so you don't have to work the works of the law. So these people, they could not have been working the works of the law to be justified. They had to be just believing because the Bible says, to the one who doesn't work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. Notice the one who's believing and not working under the law, they're justified, that's a not guilty verdict, and they're made righteous. Which that's why Paul is saying, do not be deceived, the unrighteous not, will not inherit the kingdom of God, that you have to be made righteous. But the righteousness that they have can't be through the law because Paul had already said, I do not nullify the grace of God for if righteousness came through the law, then Christ died needlessly. So their righteousness with God could not have been through their performance and obedience to the law. I do not nullify the grace of God for if righteousness came through the law, then Christ died needlessly. So this collection of people, they couldn't have been performing under the law by then which they were made righteous because that would have nullified the grace of God. So we see that they were made righteous by their faith and not through the law, not by working. They were justified, not guilty, 
they were made righteous in the sight of God just by believing and not working. To the one who doesn't work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. These terms justified and righteous are important because when we're rightly dividing the word of truth to come up to pro with proper conclusions, we have to go to the Bible, other parts of the Bible, to get the answers we need so that we can come up with proper conclusions when we're at this First Corinthians verse. Because what Final Call is, is teaching is that you will be made righteous through repenting of sin, which is keeping the law, and that you'll be justified that same way. He's not saying that you can just believe and have faith alone in Christ. He's saying that you have a relationship to the law by which then you will be justified and made righteous. So what Final Call is doing is teaching people that they can have a righteousness of their own through the law. But Paul said the very opposite in Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. May I be found in him, having a righteousness not of my own, which comes through the law, but that which comes through faith in Jesus Christ, even the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. So the righteousness that we have and the righteousness that these people had in 1 Corinthians, where Paul is addressing these people, was a righteousness not of their own through the law. In other words, it wasn't through their performance and their obedience that they were made righteous, but it was through faith. What Final Call 07 was doing was getting people to try to believe that they'll be justified by the works of the law and that they'll be made righteous that way. Scripture is very clear by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. No one will get a non guilty verdict by their behavior and their performance to the law. Only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. They'll only get to heaven and find out that they're guilty under the system that he's proposing. That's why the scripture says that the law brings about wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. That the law brings about the wrath of God. But the Bible tells us that Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So we know these people in 1 Corinthians, their righteousness was through believing in Christ because the law had come to its end for them when they believed. It couldn't be that they got righteousness through the law. It would contradict the entire gospel. When we come to Christ, the law comes to its end, the very thing that would show us that we're idolaters or adulterers or swindlers or thieves. The law has come to its end, and now we have a righteousness not of our own through the law. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So hopefully anyone's watching this, they can start to see the clear error that is happening right here with Juan as he's teaching that a person is made righteous through the law, that they can be justified a not guilty verdict through their performance and obedience to the law. He believes in an individualized performance under the law by which he can be made righteous under his own efforts, and then by merit of that, he would be able to boast. But the scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, by his own doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became from us from God, righteousness, sanctification, redemption, and wisdom, so that just as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. That the one who would boast that they are righteous in the sight of God would boast that it's because of the Lord, not because of self. Which also includes sanctification. By his own doing, you're in Christ Jesus, who became from us from God, righteousness and sanctification, which is what Paul is telling these people. You were justified, you were sanctified in the name of the Lord and the Spirit of our God. That they are sanctified, past tense, they are justified, past tense, and it was in the name of the Lord and in the spirit of our God. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10 says, By his will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ once and for all. So we were sanctified and it was through the offering of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ once and for all. It wasn't through our works or performance to the law, which is what Final Call is trying to suggest here. And hopefully you can see what he's doing is trying to get people to work for favor under the law, to try to work to get favor by your performance and obedience to the law. But Romans chapter 4 verse 4 says to the one who works, it's not counted as favor, but his wages due. But to the one who doesn't work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. So the one who's working to try to get favor as far as being justified and made righteous, they don't get what they would suppose, they get wages due. Because by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. Because they were working under the law to try to get justified and made righteous, that didn't happen because 
No one can do it under their own power. Only Jesus Christ could. And we have to enter into that life and die to ourselves. So you can work your entire life under the law, work on bloody knees, working your fingers to the bone, trying to be good, trying to be righteous, and you won't get favor. You will have wages due. But by the grace of God to the one who doesn't work, so you don't have to work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness, but believes on him, Jesus, who justifies the ungodly, that's a non-guilty verdict, his faith is accredited to righteousness. So I'm going to go ahead and play a little bit more of this. He makes it very clear. He says, and such were some of you. Repentance means to turn away from sin, to turn away from your former lifestyle, and to live in obedience to Jesus Christ, to be utterly holy, because with... See, he's teaching that you'll be righteous through your obedience, but we're righteous through Christ's obedience, just as through one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. Even so, through the one man's obedience, the many are made righteous. So it's through the one man's obedience that we're made righteous, not through our obedience. See, these people in 1 Corinthians were made righteous through Christ's obedience, not their own in accordance to the law. But they have righteousness by faith in the one man's obedience. And so they're collectively and equally made righteous, Romans chapter 3, verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Christ Jesus, upon all those who believe, and there is no difference. You see Paul saying, such were some of you. And then he says why they're not that anymore, because they were washed, they were justified, and they were sanctified, not because they were keeping the law. See, Juan is believing, the final call 07 is believing that these people are now keeping the law, and that's why Paul said such were some of you. But the reason why Paul said such were some of you is because he knew that God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And despite who they are in the flesh, they're not recognized to be that because of the work of Christ that Colossians chapter 1 verse 22 says he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death, that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. That's why Paul can say such were some of you, because now we're holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation because of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for us. So what Paul is doing is not regarding them for who they would be under the law. Paul said, For now on we regard no one according to the flesh, though we knew Jesus Christ that way, we know him that way no longer. So we regard no one according to the flesh who would, they would be under the law, because under the law we would all be some flavor of sin and some flavor of flesh. Someone wouldn't be an adulterer. Jesus said whoever looks at a woman lustfully with their eyes is guilty of adultery in their heart. So thought crimes can get you guilty under God's law. So under God's law, one of us would be an adulterer, one of us would be a liar, one of us would be covetous. We would be something under the law. That's what the law reveals, that the flesh is sinful. And that it in it no good thing dwells. That's why we need to be justified and washed in the name of the Lord and in the spirit of our God and sanctified that way. So what Final Call is teaching is a law justification by which you are justified and made righteous through your performance and obedience to the law, which can never happen. Final Call never rightly divided the word of the truth. He never took the time to study the functionality of the law to see what it does, what it doesn't do, who it's for, and who it's not for. So I'll go ahead and play a little more of this. Without holiness, no man will see God. So without holiness, no man will see God. How many false teachers always quote this verse that he's quoting right there? but then won't rightly divide the word of truth to take you to passages in the scripture to show you how that is actually accomplished. Because it is true, without holiness, no one will see God, but we need to know how that is accomplished. Since the Bible tells us that there's no one good but God alone, and there's none righteous, no, not even one, in and of our own standing, we need to know how we can be made holy. Well, the scripture does tell us. He reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body, by his death that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. So the reason why we're holy in God's sight without blemish and free from accusation was because of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. 
Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, by his will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ once and for all. For one time and for all time, we've been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, this was all by Jesus Christ's sacrifice. And that's why Paul said, may I never boast except in the cross of Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world that our boasting for why we're made holy in God's sight without blemish, free from accusation is because of the cross. And that's our only boasting. Final call of seven was trying to get people to boast in themselves that they would be made holy through human performance, that they would be made perfect by what they do in the flesh. And that's why the Bible says, are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, do you think you're being made perfect in the flesh? To be perfect is holy and to be holy is perfect. You know, like when Jesus said, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Well, that means to be holy, to have God's holy character and attribute. Well, how does that accomplish? Well, we see from the scriptures, we just went through how we're made holy. And how we're made perfect, it's by the cross of Christ. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14, by one offering he has perfected forever those who are sanctified. What the flesh couldn't do, it couldn't make itself perfect, Jesus Christ did on the cross by one offering. He has perfected forever those who are sanctified. So Jesus Christ gets all the glory for our perfection before God, that we're holy in a sight without blemish and free from accusation. But final call never boasted in the cross. He His boast was in the law and human performance, and he tried to get other people to believe that they'll be justified, not guilty verdict, and made righteous through the law. He was working for favor he could never achieve. And yet he was also trying to get other people to do the same thing. He unfortunately did not do the will of the Father because the will of the Father is this. This is the will of the Father that all that look to the Son and believe in him would have eternal life. Final call was looking to the law and he believed that his performance would make him saved or righteous and justified, which means he was just simply believing in himself. You must repent, dear friend or you will certainly perish in hell. He's just saying you need to keep the law or you'll certainly perish in hell. But it was him trying to keep the law to be justified is the reason why he will perish in hell. Unfortunately, by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for only by law comes the knowledge of sin. He didn't truly repent, which would be to turn to God, to flee any attempts an idea that you could be made righteous or justified through your own goodness and turn to Christ alone, realizing that you have nothing in your hands to bring to God. So it's really sad from what we know, he never did turn to God for real salvation, to really turn in true repentance to the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. So anyways, guys, I was just sharing some thoughts in this video that I was sent, and I hope your night or day is going good, and God bless you, and take care. There have been people with beautiful faces, many memories and wonderful places, but my Lord Jesus, you never let me down. Through the years and all of these changes, you've been my friend, never a stranger, and my Lord Jesus. Keep me heaven bound I love my father and mother Love my sisters and brother yeah. When the seasons have turned